A team of researchers, including Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb, may have just found a trace of an interstellar object in the ocean, which Loeb believes could have alien origins. And he joins us now to discuss this. Welcome, Dr. Loeb. Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure. Yeah, great to have you join us. So please uh, give us more detail. Describe your work and what you hope to have found. Well, it's a very challenging task. Uh, we uh, followed on data about a meteor that uh, landed about uh, uh, 50 miles away from the coast of Papua New Guinea in 2014. And uh, when analyzing it, it became clear that it came from outside the solar system. It was moving too fast to be bound to the sun. And it had material strength that was tougher than iron. And so that raised the possibility that it may be artificial in origin, technological, a spacecraft, just like uh, New Horizons that we sent out uh, that will go to interstellar space and imagine it colliding with an exoplanet like the Earth and appearing as a meteor. Uh, to find this out, it's not just a hypothetical question. We can actually go to the Pacific Ocean and search for it. And that's what we did. And it's a very challenging task because uh, we're looking for um, fragments uh, that were left behind from the fireball, the explosion of this meteor, and they can be a fraction of a millimeter inside, roughly the size of uh, the head of a pin. And just imagine they're sitting on the ocean floor at a depth of uh, about a mile, and we are trying to find them. And uh, for that, we are using a sled with magnets on it, and we are assuming that uh, these uh, small uh, droplets that melted off the surface of the object when it entered the atmosphere and burned up, uh, those droplets uh, would be attracted to the magnet. And so we were sort of moving the sled back and forth across uh, a region of uh, about 10 miles. And uh, amazingly enough, we found the needle in the ocean. So what, tell us what you found and why there is is some indication or why you suspect that it might be interstellar in origin. And, and are, is what you're saying, not just that it's interstellar in origin and insofar as it came from outside of the solar system, but that it is evidence of intelligent design? Well, um, so first about the interstellar origin, that became clear from the high speed of the meteor. Mm -hmm. uh, and we discovered it uh, based on government data. And then the U.S. Uh, Space Command issued the letter to NASA where it confirmed that the 99.999% that indeed this object was moving uh, too fast to be bound to the sun, that it came from outside the solar system. And moreover, they released data about the fireball that allowed us to infer that it's tougher than all the space rocks that were identified by NASA over the past decade, 272 of them. So it was made of very unusual material. And that uh, led me to initiate this uh, expedition. And we have an exceptional team of uh, researchers and uh, support staff that allowed us to build this machinery that we are using well, to find those uh, fragments that were left behind. And now we can actually look at the materials that we recovered. And um, amazingly enough, we found the uh, basically what is called the spherols. These are particles that are spherical, uh, perfect spheres made of metal. And we can put them into uh, 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 what is called an X-ray fluorescence uh, analyzer that allows us to infer the composition. And the composition appears to be different than uh, uh, commercial uh, metals that we use here on Earth, uh, anything uh, that humans produce. But it's also different from asteroids, from rocks that uh, previously were analyzed. And that makes, first of all, it, it implies that perhaps indeed uh, the, it was, it originated from a completely different environment. And moreover, perhaps it was manufactured uh, in an uh, artificial way, uh, technologically. And you know, that would be the first time, first of all, the first time that an interstellar object 
was analyzed by humans. You know, we can hold it in our hand, the materials. Mm. Uh, we retrieve them from the ocean. And the ocean is a perfect uh, museum to collect those things because uh, they do not get covered. If it fell in the Sahara de- Desert, for example, uh, it would have been covered by dust uh, uh, over the past decade. We wouldn't find it. And so we are lucky on many fronts, also in terms of those small particles you know it took us a while to find them uh because they were embedded in uh, volcanic ash that uh, basically covers the uh, entire surface of the ocean floor and uh and so we had to uh, you know go with tweezers and isolate them but after looking at them uh, through microscopes and you know as of now we have 11 of them it's they are quite remarkable you can see images of them that i put on uh, my blog uh, on medium.com. So if you just search for mm. Avi Loeb, it's medium.com. In fact, I just just a half an hour ago, I show a, a images of the last two that we discovered. Uh, but before that, there were nine others. And they they are quite remarkable. I mean, they're tiny, the size of remarkable. the head of the pin. And these are the type of droplets you get from heating of any meteor that enters the atmosphere. But in this case... The meteor is very special, both in composition and in speed. It actually moved outside the solar system faster than 95% of all the stars near the sun. And that raises the possibility that it it had some artificial propulsion. Why would it move so fast, even relative to stars near the sun? And why would it be made of materials that are far tougher than than iron? Hmm. And so now we, we have the materials. I, and I plan to bring them back to the Harvard College Observatory where we have access to exceptional instruments. We can't have them here on the boat. Uh, we have some preliminary analysis. But once we analyze them, uh, you know, uh, there we can yeah. uh, quite conclusively figure out first that this object was interstellar because we might find isotopes that you don't see in uh, uh, solar system objects. But moreover, we might uh, figure out that it's actually technological in origin. Uh, Once again, because it's made of uh, some alloy that uh, does Hmm. not appear in nature. Yeah, well, speaking of the boat, I think we would love uh, to get a uh, quick tour. And and also, you know, many of those who follow um, sightings of UFOs have noticed a possible link between large bodies of waters like ocean to sightings of UAPs or UFOs. Do you think it's possible that, you know, there is alien life in in the oceans, possibly traveling through larger bodies of water? No, the the way I interpret this is... uh, you can think of Voyager, New Horizons, Pioneer that we launched into space. This will go into the interstellar space. And, mm-hmm. you know, in a billion years, it's functional anymore. So they will collide with a planet like the Earth um, and just burn up in the atmosphere. And perhaps the core of those spacecraft will end up at the ocean floor. And so, in fact, we might be searching for the, whatever is left behind. And in my last class at Harvard, I asked the students, uh, if we find a gadget, uh, should we press a button? Would you press a button? (laughs) And uh, half of the class said, no way. I'm worried about the consequences. Half of the class said, I'm actually quite curious to figure out what will happen. Maybe it's GPT-100. And I am very reserved. I will not try. You shouldn't (laughs) worry because I first will bring it to a laboratory. But I can show you around uh, yes, please. Please. in the boat. Uh, we can just go down. Um, so uh, uh, I'm currently in the upper floor. I'll show you. This is the captain uh, navigating uh, <laughs> wow. the, the ship, uh, which uh, very fittingly is called the Silver Star. And, um, I'll take you down to the uh, deck. So this is where we eat. Um, oh, that's kind of nice. Here Pink we are going seating. down to the deck where we... Yeah, it's a very nice uh, boat. It's uh, made of aluminum, actually. And uh, what you see here is the, what is called the winch, which is basically a cable that is connected to the, uh, what, the sled. The sled is basically... Here we have a second copy of the sled. 
it has a, an array of magnets uh, on both sides that collect magnetic particles that are magnetized. And they basically attach to it. And as this sled is dragged on the ocean floor, roughly a mile deep, so it's very deep and dark there. And we have also video cameras that take a picture of uh, where we are going on the ocean floor and bring it back to deck. So basically you can see the winch cable going into the ocean. It's Right now it's dark, it's nighttime, uh, and the, the sled is now a mile down from where the ship is. And just think about it, we're going about 10 miles on each line that we are surveying and uh, roughly a mile deep and we're finding these tiny, tiny spherules that are attached to the magnets that end up uh, in our laboratory and we will analyze them. And uh, if you want to see images of the spherules, um, I'll uh, just go to my um, essays at uh, medium.com. I, I can show you also uh, the last two that the uh, as of uh, just uh, M Mr. half Mr. an Mr. hour ago, I received, uh, we, we were able to identify. Mr. So Mr. let me show you just these images. One second. Okay, this, this is this is fascinating stuff. And just while you're going over to those images, you're saying that because the metal is an the sphere the spheres you, that you've recovered are alloys. They're combinations of metals that we haven't uh, that are not naturally occurring. That is what the real kind of red flag is here that they were made and not just um, you know uh, random particles that are crashing into Earth. So this is evidence of extraterrestrial life. Right. Fascinating. Yes, uh, we can. Yeah, it's the composition, but we know that it's interstellar. Also, uh, here is another image that is quite beautiful. Can you, you can tilt your camera down a little bit? Them. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. Wow. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Lowe. We really appreciated the time you spent with us. And good luck with your mission. I know there are a lot of folks very interested in this particular issue right now, both because of the people that were lost in the submarine. Um, deep sea exploration is fascinating. And because of the recent reporting about some potential mm -hmm. revelations about UFOs from the government. Thank you again. Thanks for having me, and science can be exciting. <laughs> Indeed. We'd More. love to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. More rising right after this. Bye-bye.